Hey everyone, Yanni Plays here and welcome back to Animated Minecraft. So today we are finally going to import a map into Blender and I thought, well, why not? Let's just go and hop onto one of my survival worlds and import this map or this area of this map here. So let's get on it and start importing this world here. To download a world and import it to Blender, we are going to use Vineways. And as always, I am going to put the link down into the description. If you're on this page here, you just go ahead and you download Vineways uh, 9.01. That is the most current version as of the time that I'm recording that. So you download that and then you are going to get a zip file. And in that zip folder, you have a folder named Mineways, and in here you find a whole bunch of different things. But what we are concerned about is Mineways.exe. So go ahead and double click on that to start up Mineways. Once Mineways is started up, you are being greeted by one big blank canvas. And if you go on to file and to open world, you are going to see all of your worlds that you have in your Java Minecraft. And as you can see, it brings me right over where my spawn is. Now, if you go on to view, you also can jump to the player and that just brings you to the location where the player was seen last. You also can uh, just pull and drag so your left mouse button and you can drag around and go into the area where you would like to go. Now, if you are planning to do something, let's say here in the middle of this forest or somewhere and you're not exactly sure where it is or you cannot spot it and the jump to player doesn't work for some reason, you always can just lay out some colorful wool or something. I recommend using like yellow uh, because if you use red, we have a lot of lava lakes or things like that. Or if you have a dark oak forest, sometimes red is hard to spot. So just use something like that to mark your area. But this one here is our drained ocean monument. And that is where we are going to make our scene. Now in view, you also can jump over to the nether or to the end. So if you want to record a scene over there, then you could just jump over there. Then in view, we also have a few other things that we can change. So one of the things would be the cave mode. So let's say you found this epic cave and you want to do a recording down there. So you can turn on the cave so you can see a little bit better where this cave may be so that you can select it. Then if you use your right mouse button, you can make this pink rectangle or a square around the area and that is pretty much what we are going to import but as you can see my ocean monument is not orange well why is that as of right now we are going to get all of the blocks down to level 62 so that means all of the blocks underneath of 62 are going to be blank and that includes the ocean so you would not have an ocean floor so that's why it's important if you select ocean or if you want to do anything in a cave that you actually go and you change it. See, I'm dragging it down and now you, you see how it slowly gets down the ocean monument. And if I drag it all the way down here to bedrock level, then it is also going to take the uh, glass floor that we had in there. Now, actually, I am going to make it a little bit smaller. So if you want to get rid of a uh, selection, you just uh, right click somewhere. I am just going to select this small area here because we are recording down here. So that means that we are not going to see anything on land anyways. I make it a little bit over here because my scene is shooting in this area here. But if I would record something, uh, let's say over here in a forest or on this plane, then of course you would have to go a little bit bigger just to make sure that you see everything. But also don't go too big because the bigger you go, the more data is being imported into Blender, then the more data you have to work with. So you kind of have to find the right thing between not too much and uh, not too little. Once we have our selection, we go up into file 
and then we click on export for rendering and that is going to create the obj file for us and once you click ok you're being greeted by this window here and you can leave everything on standard but if you want you can read through it and see what are those different things doing once we click on ok it is going to create that export file and we are ready to import everything into blender so now with Blender open, let's go ahead and import our world. So for that, you could go on to File, Import. However, if you do it through this one here, you are not going to get as good as a result because you're pretty much just going to get one world up here. But we would like to have multiple different ones because maybe you want to swap out some blocks and you need to change a few things or uh, you want to hide all the grass and all the leaves while you are preparing your scene so that everything runs faster. So that's why we are going through our beloved MC prep. And in MC prep, all the way in the top, you can find the OBJ world import. So let's click on that. And here you can find your OBJ file that I just saved. Now, please note, as we exported the world, it also created an MTL file. MTL stands for material. So if you have this one here missing, then you're just going to have a blank uh, world with nothing, no texture on it. So probably going to be a pink world or a white world. So make sure that you have this one here when you export your world. But if you follow my steps that I just showed uh, like a minute ago, then it should be in here like that. So let's click on import world and go and get a coffee or a water break. So we are back. It just took a couple minutes and everything is here. The world is here. And as you can see in the top right, it now created a world with every single block. So if there are some blocks that you don't want to see, you can just go ahead and hide them. So for example, the oak leaves, you can hide them away. So if you have some issues while uh, zooming and cruising around your world, you can turn things like that off. So now let's go and look at our ocean monument here. So those are all of my glass layers. And here will be the ocean monument. And you already can see that the glass looks kind of weird. And also a lot of our other textures are really blurry and not good looking. Well, that's because we have to prep our material. And that is why we use MC Prep. Because with MC Prep, all we have to do is we have to click on A, what selects everything. And then we can click on Prep Materials. And you can leave the standard settings here. You don't have to change anything. Click on OK. And now it is getting all of our material ready. Now, don't ask me why we are having a texture on our glass. That actually is the first time that I imported something with that amount of glass. So going to see if I can find a solution for that. But you can see that all of the other blocks are looking good. So next, let's go ahead and add a sky. And also here, MC Prep has the option for me. All I have to do is click on MC Sky. Now there are a few different uh, skies that you can choose from. I'm just going with the dynamic uh, with shaders sun at moon. And I'm going to leave clouds in. And we're also going to leave the remove initial suns. So that means if you would have any sunlights in the world, it would remove them because it is going to add one for us. And once we click OK, we now have a sky. And if we hop over into viewport shading, you can see that you easily can change the time of the day. Well, for example, now we are in the middle of the day. That take forever to load that because there's just so much data to process. Oh, and actually now when we are in the light and shading viewport, you can see that our texture issue that I had on my glass is gone. So that is something that is just in the uh, shader viewport without the lighting. And that is how you import the world. And from here, you can just go and you can grab your characters. You can add them like what we learned. You can start animating everything. And build up your scene. 
and then at the end render everything. So pretty much what we learned in the last seven episodes I believe is what you can combine here to create whatever you want. And this one here also would be the end from the animated Minecraft series. And I'm still planning to do some videos on Blender and around Blender. For example here I'm still going to create this scene here. I'm gonna take you in on those videos. Uh, show you how I set up things and if I come across something that I haven't seen before or that may be a little bit tricky then I'm going to point those out. So if you want to see some more Blender animations how I do things then consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much and I hope I see you at the next video.